everybody and in this week's Bungie weekly update we have some pretty interesting news about Trials of Osiris this weekend and we get to have a look at some of the weapons a very small amount of the weapons considering how many we're gonna be getting with the Taken King so we're gonna kick things off by taking a look at some of these new weapons so first of all it's worth stating that we are gonna have the biggest weapon arsenal ever within the Taken King bigger than when the game initially came out. So this is going to be huge. We're going to have so many new weapons to play around with and hopefully have a lot of fun with. First, let's kick it off with the manufacturer called Hake. What these guys are all about is creating something that's all about function. Over being snazzy and jazzy, they want the gun to just be really, really good. So this is what the auto rifle looks like. It looks like an ACR from Call of Duty. It looks like a very standard kind of military type weapon. Then we have the shotgun, which again looks very similar. They all have very, very, very similar looks when they're made by the same manufacturer. And I really like that because then you're able to distinguish between what's a hockey gun, what's a Suros gun, etc. And then we have the pulse rifle, which again looks very similar. It has a very sleek design. It's all about the function, not about being super fancy. Next up, we have Omelon, where these guys are about experimenting, bordering on being irresponsible. They are powered by barely understood technology. So these guys are about pushing things that are a little bit different. They're pioneers of energy weaponry. So they're gonna be making stuff that is more about just trying to push the boundaries of weaponry. Basically the complete opposite of hockey. They're trying to be functional and just make a really good gun that's not gonna mess up on you. Oh, Milana, like, screw that. I wanna go make things that are fancy and I wanna try out new things. So first of all, we have the scout rifle and you may notice that this looks a lot like hard light. Hard light actually looks basically the same as all of these weapons that you're gonna be seeing from Omelon. The next one we have is the hand cannon, which again has that very hard light kind of look, which I'm not mad at because hard light is a very good looking weapon. And then next we have the sniper rifle, which I think looks insane. It looks almost a little ridiculous. It has Omelon on the side and big capital letters. It's very thick. It's just, it's, it's freaking huge. <laughs> it's just, it's really big. I would not mind using the sniper rifle. It, I think it looks really cool. I'm personally liking the way that Omelon stuff looks a lot so far. Next up, we have our good friend Suros, who we are all very familiar with. And what Suros is all about is creating things that look very slick and very elegant. They don't want it to just look like a machine made to kill people. They want it to look sleek, classy, and uh, yeah, basically. <laughs> so first of all, let's take a look at the auto rifle. I think this thing looks awesome. Suros weapons look so good. I was fortunate enough to use the Suros pulse rifle at E3, which is not actually in this list, which just shows you how many new weapons we're going to be getting because Suros is going to have like auto rifles, hand cannon, shotgun, sniper rifle, pulse rifle, rocket launcher, machine gun, etc. And then Omelon's going to have the same and then Hockey is going to have the same. And then who knows what else we're going to have. So the auto rifle looks super freaking cool. The scout rifle also looks really cool. Not as cool as the uh, auto rifle and not as cool as the pulse rifle but the rocket launcher and this is actually one that I did get to see in E3 looks super awesome it just looks really sleek it almost looks the same as dragon's breath but take off the whole you know dragon part and put Suro stuff all over it but looking at these weapons is not the most interesting part of the news in the Bungie Weekly update about weapons I'm gonna read this to you directly from the Bungie Weekly update there will be more choices than ever to arm yourself in the tower. Factions will have their own guns. Classes will have their own guns. More quests will lead you directly to specific guns. Even the gunsmith will have a new way to include you in his enterprise. We'll inspect all of that as well before you earn the means to equip yourselves to meet a rising threat. Did you guys, did you guys catch that? Class specific guns. That is crazy. That's, it, I mean, it's not crazy. I guess it makes sense. And there's, there's one thing, okay, I'm really excited about that. The only thing is that I would be a little concerned about 
one specific type of weapon being really good and say it can only be used by warlocks. And so everyone uses a warlock because everyone wants to use that strongest weapon. That's the only thing that would concern me. So I really hope that Bungie are well balancing everything and are prepared to continue balancing things if things get out of hand. But this is really exciting. I, I really like this. I actually really do. Although I am concerned about the whole balancing thing, I am really excited about it because it makes the classes feel even more unique to one another. Because right now, of course, you have like different grenades, you have different supers or whatever, but being able to have class-specific weapons, I think is really cool. And I'm just excited to see what that is. Like, does a hunter have like a, a, a bow with a knife on it? Do they have, do they have like a like a staff that they can, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know, but it just sounds really exciting. And that's crazy. That's something we haven't had before. And this is just a small, tiny glimpse of what's coming with the Taken King. And that's already quite a big deal. It's quite a big deal. And the fact that they're saying that factions will have their own guns, because right now, Dead Orbit has their own guns and Future War Call has their own guns. The fact that they're actually saying that makes me feel like it's gonna be a little bit different. Like maybe you can only use a dead orbit weapon if you are currently repping dead orbit. And I feel like the way that you're gonna be repping different factions is gonna be a lot different in the Taken King to what it is now. I don't think it's just gonna be equip a cape and now you're a part of dead orbit. I think you're gonna have to like sign a contract with dead orbit or something in game and be like, yes. I'm going to be a part of you and then you can get to use their weapon. That's what it's making me think because they actually mentioned that and that's not a big deal. We have that already. So I feel like maybe you're only going to be able to use Dead Orbit Future War Cult weapons if you are actually dedicating yourself to that specific cause. So that's super exciting. That's super exciting. Let me know in the comment section, what do you think about having class specific weapons? Let me know guys because I'm really excited to know what you guys think about that. And the last thing that I want to talk about is the Trials of Osiris map for this weekend. So usually we come to the weekend and we don't know what map it is. We're not told what it is, but now we have been told what map it's going to be this week. And the answer is all of them. Now, when I say all of them, I mean all of the Trials of Osiris maps that we've played. So if you're playing Elimination and you've played on like Rusted Lands or Twilight Gap or Shores of Time, it's not going to be any of those. It's going to be the maps that you have played in Trials of Osiris already. So we're speaking of Widow's Court, Thieves' Den, The Cauldron, Pantheon, Burning Shrine, Black Shield. Those are the ones that we're going to be playing. So you're going to go in, you don't know which map you're going to get, and it's going to be on a rotation. It's going to be different every time you're playing Charles Osiris. I'm really excited for this because now we've seen all of the maps, we've all had the opportunity to play on all of the Trials of Osiris maps. It's really nice to be able to just have it in rotation. It's gonna keep it a little bit more fresh. It's gonna keep it more interesting. Teams can't just do the same thing every single time. So I think it's gonna make Trials of Osiris super exciting this weekend and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now this is an experiment. They've said that this is something that they're just doing for this week only to see how we feel about it. So after we do get to actually play it, they want to know our opinion on if we like the rotation during Trials of Osiris. So please do play Trials and let Bungie know if you think it's a good idea or not. Otherwise, they'll just go back to having it one map a week and that's that. But I'm personally really excited to play on a rotation. It's just gonna, it's gonna be different every time. And I really like that. People can't just get a strategy down and stick to it. They have to switch things up. They have to adapt. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to that a lot. So that is it for the Bungie Weekly update. If you wanna read the whole thing or know what else was in there, cause I did leave some things out. Just wanted to talk about the things that I thought were the most interesting. Make sure to check the link in the description so you can go and check it all out yourself. There's also heat maps of each of the Trials of Osiris maps. So you can study up and see where all of the action usually takes place on those maps. I'd also like to know, what is your favorite Trials of Osiris map? Which one are you most looking forward to playing this weekend? Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. I love you all. Remember to stay positive and I'll speak to you awesome people later. Bye.